Excellencies, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to all of you. My name is Elisabeth Turk. I'm the director of UNECE's Economic Cooperation and Trade Division. And it's my great pleasure to moderate this side event of the World Circular Economy Forum on the theme, Promoting Circularity in Transition Economies, the Role of Trade and Economic Cooperation. I would like to extend our immense gratitude to the Geneva Trade Platform for joining hands with UNECE to make this event a reality and to the CITRA Fund for giving us this platform to discuss issues related to the circular economy. Let me start with a few housekeeping issues. First, I'm very pleased that we are able to provide English-Russian interpretation. You can download the Interactua app or access the web app from your browser. You will have to enter the event code, that's TRADE20, with a two zero in numbers, and then you can select the English or Russian channel. The detailed instructions how to do so, you can find them in the chat box. Second, some information on the setup of our virtual platform. Please note that the audience is muted and cannot be seen. Second, important for our distinguished speakers and panelists, you are all unmuted by the system. That means that please mute yourself if you're not speaking to avoid any background noise. And please unmute yourself if you are speaking. Lastly, a reminder that this session is being recorded and it will be made available to the public afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the discussions we are about to have here today will be unique. Not because the circular economy topic is new, but because we will be tackling the issue from a different perspective, that of the so-called transition economies, namely economies that are transitioning from a centrally planned to a market-oriented economy. As the circular economy topic is gaining provenance, we need to understand what it means for transition economies, what benefits they can reap, what challenges they will have to face, and we need to ensure that their voices are heard and taken into account. In essence, at UNECE, we are supporting the transition to a circular economy, and our goal is to ensure that transition economies, which constitute the bulk of our 17 program countries, are part of the discussions. Today, we are honored to have with us high-level representatives from four of our 17 program countries, from Georgia, Kazakhstan, North Macedonia, and Serbia. Our distinguished speakers will share their unique perspectives on the circular economy and will let us know concretely what their respective countries are doing to advance circularity. That brings me to the structure of the session and the agenda. Our session is basically composed of three elements. First, a high level opening. Second, a panel discussion with experience sharing. And third, an interactive element, a tool to engage our audience. And that tool is running throughout part one and part two. More about this in a second. Coming to our distinguished speakers, for our high level opening segment, we are delighted and honored to have with us Ms. Olga Algayerova, United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the UNECE. His Excellency, Mr. Kreshnik Bekdeshi, Minister of Economy of North Macedonia, and Her Excellency, Ms. Nino Tandishwili, Deputy Minister of Environment Protection and Agriculture of Georgia. After this opening segment, we will have an experience sharing session, again with an excellent lineup of panelists. From Kazakhstan, we will have Mr. Oljas Sartayev, CEO of the Park of Innovative Technologies Special Economic Zone. From Serbia, Ms. Aleksandra Vucinic, Head of Group for Circular and Green Economy from the Ministry of Environmental Protection. 
and from the Institute of European Environmental Policy, Ms. Marianne Keitunen, Principal Policy Analyst and Head of Program Global Challenges and SDGs. Her Excellency, Ms. Nino Tandashvili, has agreed to stay on and share her experience also in this second segment, and we greatly appreciate it. If we have some time left, we might take a few questions towards the end of the segment from the audience. And I therefore invite the audience, including those joining us from Capitals, to pose their questions in the Q&A box. Before proceeding to the opening segment, let's kickstart the session with a fun icebreaker using a software called Mentimeter. Mentimeter is a way to engage our audience in other words, to hear from you and to ultimately see from you. Please use your electronic device that could be iPhone, tablet, computer, and go to menti.com, insert the code you see displayed on the screen right now, and type your response to the following question. What do you associate with the term circular economy? We will look at the results generated by Mentimeter later after our opening segment, and we will look at it again in the closing of the webinar. So please, audience, join us, engage, use your phone, and let us know what terms do you associate with circular economy. Again, the instructions can be found in the chat box. That was it in terms of housekeeping, and logistics, let us now start our high level opening segment. And without further ado, let me give the floor to Ms. Olga Algayerova, United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the UNECE, to give her opening remarks. Ms. Algayerova, you have the floor. Thank you, dear Elizabeth, and I'm sure with this uh, excellent participation, this discussion will be really unique, as you mentioned, and I'm looking forward. Your Excellency, Mr. Kreshnik Bekteshi, Minister of Economy, North Macedonia. Your Excellency, Mrs. Nino Tandilashvili, Deputy Minister of Environment Protection and Agriculture from Georgia. Distinguished experts and panelists from Kazakhstan, Serbia, and the Institute for European Environmental Policy. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it's really my great pleasure to open this session of the World Circular Economy Forum entitled Promoting Circularity in Transition Economies, the Role of Trade and Economic Cooperation. My special appreciation goes to the Geneva Trade Platform for partnering with us to make this event a reality, and uh, also to the Citra Fund for providing a global platforms to discuss circularity matters. The world is growing fast, but unfortunately not sustainably. The World Bank estimates that by 2050, the world will have to tackle serious challenges. This range from feeding 9 billion people to providing access to affordable energy while managing global greenhouse gas emissions. COVID-19 has exacerbated these issues and exposed the flaws in our current economic models. It revealed the need for building back better while ensuring resilience to external shocks, fostering inclusiveness and promoting sustainability. We must find effective ways to meet current needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own. Transitioning to a circular economy is a key in this process. We need to change how we manage our resources, how we make and use products and what we do with them after we use them. This would not only bring us closer to the 2030 agenda and our SDGs, but it would also promote a thriving economy that benefits everyone. For this reason, no one should be left behind in these discussions. To ensure inclusiveness, we need effective economic cooperation among countries with the support of intergovernmental organizations. 
At UNEC, we stand ready to advance circularity principles within the spirit of cooperation and inclusiveness. And this is why our 69th commission session will be held next April under the theme, promoting circular economy and sustainable use of natural resources in the UNEC region. I warmly invite all of you to participate uh, in our commission session. At the UNEC Secretariat, this theme is embedded in all our work streams, offering numerous tools, recommendations, and norms. For instance, in our energy division, we host a unique tool called the United Nations Framework Classification for Resources, which is now being expanded to the United Nations Resource Management System. Together, this framework and the management system provide a unified, comparable, interoperable, and harmonized approach to resource assessment and management that can be used for governmental, statistical, social, corporate, and financial purposes. They provide a robust set of standards, guidelines, protocols, and best practices for putting attainment of the 2030 agenda at the core of sustainable resource management. In terms of circular economy, they also apply to anthropogenic resources, which are generally classified as waste. Anthropogenic resources can provide useful benefits through the provision of secondary raw materials and energy used in the economic activity. Another example, our transport division develops regulations for cleaner and safer vehicles, but also pertaining their recyclability, which greatly reduces the need for raw materials in vehicle construction. In our statistics division, we hope to measure it all by supporting national statistical systems meet the relevant data needs. It's also important to recognize that the circular economy concept is not one dimensional. Besides central government, cities can also drive the circular economy agenda forward. In fact, local authorities are key actors for SDG implementation. UNEC's housing and land management division works with cities across the region to support their efforts in becoming smart, sustainable and circular providing guidelines, best practices, and indicators to measure progress. Beyond the national level, international cooperation and trade are also major pillars of circular transition. In our trade and economic cooperation division, we work towards improving the traceability and transparency of value chains. This is a key step towards fostering circular supply chains. With these efforts, we aim to make sustainable consumption and production choices easier, both for consumers and for companies. Our trade and circular economy related UNEC tools aim at ensuring sustainable procurement, harnessing the power of innovation, including by fostering the platform economy and managing and reducing waste in areas of food loss, and promoting waste to energy projects through people first public private partnerships. You can see that UNEC has a rich portfolio of solutions to offer, spanning both normative instruments as well as innovative solutions powered by new technologies, blockchain, and the like. In doing our work, we understand that there is no one size fits all approach. Countries have a unique set of needs and challenges that should be taken into account. At UNEC, we cater the needs of 17 program countries that are transition economies. These are countries that are not traditionally at the forefront of discussions related to circularity. And this is why today's event is important. It provides us with an opportunity to hear about the circular pathways of transition economies and identify where we can support them. And this brings me to the importance of capacity building. For a country to endorse sustainable policies, it needs to be equipped with the right tools and knowledge to make decisions that don't compromise development objectives. Capacity building through experience sharing is key in this process. Today's event, for example, is a good starting point. 
It provides an opportunity to share best practices and lessons learned that could guide the way forward in the global circularity journey. I'm pleased to inform you that next year we'll be implementing a United Nations Development Account Project in support of a transition to a more circular economy. Today's event will also help us shape the concrete outcomes and deliverables for our forthcoming capacity building. I look forward to a great discussion among your distinguished panelists today, and thank you for your attention. Back to you, Elizabeth. Many thanks, Olga. Many thanks, Ms. Algayerova, for uh, these very inspiring opening remarks. Let me now give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Kreshnik Bekteshi, Minister of Economy of North Macedonia. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Twerk, respected uh, Madam Algaerova, dear colleagues, speakers, and uh, audience. Prior to start my speech, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude on behalf of the government of the Republic of North uh, Macedonia and on my own to UNC for the invitation to participate on the opening segment of this event and to have the opportunity to discuss on developing policy and transition of circular economy domestically but why not uh, even broadly? I highly appreciate as a Minister of Economy and highly value the work of UNEC in organizing this forum on a very essential topic, which is an excellent platform to listen to each other, think objectives and maintenance of predictable and transparent system of circular economy by sharing concrete outcomes and deliverables. The economic cooperation of UNEC to North Macedonia so far has a supportive approach on targeted areas, especially in trade, the paperless trade, and including even today's event should continue our work in a respectable manner. We all know that the circular economy is the path towards more sustainable use of resources because it is about more sustainable production more sustainable consumption, and for sure, better waste management. Facing this year the spread of COVID-19 in a global crisis, which creates a difficulty to be fully dedicated to our objectives, but in such circumstances, we are putting our efforts to manage the work. In order North Macedonia to promote circularity, but also to be included within the region. We have an industrial policy which focuses on the strategic objectives related to catalyze green industry and grid manufacturing, which is covered within the existing industrial strategy that we have already adopted 2018-2027. Greening an enterprise or an industry is not a one-off action, but a continuous process of radical changes that led to improving performance. The conditions that promote the greening of industries cannot be achieved by a single policy instrument. All industries, regardless of sector, location, continuously raise their environmental performance. This includes commitment to environmental impacts of processes and products by using resources more efficiently phasing out toxic substances, substituting fossil fuels with renewable energy resources, upgrading industry for the digital age, low carbon, innovation, investments, and internationalizations. In the developed national program for competitiveness, innovation, and entrepreneurship for this year, we support the companies to develop projects for assessment of company and introducing the concept of circular economy, looking at the entire life cycle of the products, waste prevention, modern waste management and recycling, as well as remanufacturing. In this sense, we started to organize awareness raising and capacity building activities on promoting green economy. 
The intention is to better understand the challenges and importance of introducing the new concept in functioning at all levels, starting from the companies itself. When it comes to the energy part, North Macedonia is taking important steps to generate electricity in favorable resources, versing to reduce dependence in greenhouse gas emissions. A new national energy and climate plan is drafted by prescribing the path of five dimensions of the energy union. Decarbonization, energy efficiency, security of energy supply, internal market of energy and research, innovation, and for sure, competitiveness. Around 63 specific policies and measures are proposed in this plan in order to achieve a set of goals defined for each of the five dimensions. Finding the fact that about 70% of total greenhouse gas emissions in the country comes from fossil fuel combustion, especially in the subsectors of energy transformation, industry and transport, by transition of the energy sector to low carbon technologies is a key goal of gradual closure of coal fired plants and accelerating the use of renewable sources for electricity production in combination for sure with the energy efficiency. North Macedonia has already ratified the Paris Climate Agreement, contributing to global efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions caused by fossil fuel combustion by 30%, which is a tendency to 36 percent higher by 2030. When it comes to regional initiatives, we as a country support the integration of Western Balkans into the EU industrial supply chain and Green Deal in all interrelated priority sector as a new EU growth strategy. Last month, during the Western Balkans summit, the region adopted a declaration on green agenda. And with this, the region commits to follow a process of transition from linear to a circular economy, being fully aware of the necessity for research and innovation system to support this transition as part of the common regional market, which is the kind of an obligation we have undertaken as Western Balkan six countries within the Berlin process. Next step is to prepare an action plan with roadmaps for implementation of this Declaration on Green Agenda and to establish an effective and efficient monitoring system. The regional agreed, the region agreed on a prominent role to associate the region to the EU's climate-related ambitions in line with the Paris Agreement and the Agenda on Sustainable Development Goals 2030. As North Macedonia, last three to four years, we have transposed all the directives and acquis from the European Union regarding and based on the new energy strategy in order to transform the energy sector within our country. And we have already started in order to make huge investments, including public and private ones, when it comes to photovoltaic uh, centrals, wind parks, but also interconnectors regarding the supply of gas. We have diversified the supply of gas in order the industry and the households to have the opportunity to have a low operation cost, to become more competitive, but also to protect the environment, having in mind that the energy in our country is around 70%, as stated even earlier, may generate it uh, from fossil uh, fuels. Beside this, we are working uh, very hard in order uh, to integrate the region as a prerequisite within a single electricity market within uh, the Western uh, Balkans, uh, so that we have the opportunity in order to balance the supply of energy, including the fossil fuels, but by reducing the generation of uh, electricity of fossil fuels in order to have the opportunity to balance all together 
the supply from renewables, having in mind that the system and the transmission uh, uh, infrastructure has to do that. So we are more than committed as a government, as a country, in order to fulfill all the obligations that we have undertaken with all these agreements. So we have a cleaner uh, uh, world and also uh, have uh, uh, pro protection of the environment within the country, but also within the region. So, uh, I will uh, like to thank for the opportunity UNEC and uh, I hope that uh, this would be uh, only a stop where we can discuss such an important topics, which are for a crucial importance, not only for the industry, but are an important uh, projects and steps we are undertaking in order to protect and have a better life uh, for our uh, citizens, uh, not in our countries, but globally as well. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Your Excellency, for these very insightful and, and detailed remarks, uh, shedding light on uh, North Macedonia's priorities and concrete steps in terms of transitioning towards a more circular economy, and also explaining what you're doing as part of the region. And indeed, we hope that this is a starting point for further engagement on this. Many thanks for having taken the time to be with us here today. Thank Let you. me now give the floor to Her Excellency, Ms. Nino Tandishwili, Deputy Minister of Environment Protection and Agriculture of Georgia. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Elizabeth. Uh, Excellencies, uh, dear Ms. Olga Algairova, uh, Mr. Kreshnik uh, Bakteshi, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to participate in the session of uh, World Cir Circular Economy Forum. Um, and I would like to particularly thank to the UNEC for organizing this session and for inviting me uh, to speak on behalf of Georgia uh, on that very important topic. Um, we know that this year we all met significant challenges uh, that uh, one more time focused us to rethink about the future development process. This is COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, let me underline that uh, at this stage, all of us should take action and contribute to the strong recovery of the world in a way that is sustainable and uh, climate friendly. I believe that the COVID-19 can be seen as a momentum for choosing the green recovery, and uh, obviously, uh, this challenge can be overcome by the collaboration with our international partners. Even though at this moment, each country faces challenges to ensure that people have access to proper healthcare system and social services, and that businesses can recover from this crisis, we should not forget our international commitments to ensure that sustainable development our country, to, to ensure the sustainable development of our countries for the sake of our future generations. And in this context, the circular economy with the aim to ensure that the resources used are kept in the economy for as long as possible is very crucial. We understand that circular economy reduces pressure on the natural resources and is a precondition for achieving the climate friendly development. Uh, for instance, uh, according to the circular economy action plan of the European Union, which has been adopted in 2015, the circular economy will have uh, positive benefits uh, in terms of uh, growing the uh, uh, and in terms of creating new jobs. Uh, and there, there was also an estimation by 2030 um, around 700,000 new jobs, which uh, which means that uh, this is a, also an opportunity and possibility not only for state, but also for the private sector as well. Uh, for Georgia, uh, the adoption of uh, circular economy principles uh, that would lead to higher resource efficiency and less uh, waste is very important. Therefore, we are working closely with our international partners to develop circular economy strategy and action plan for Georgia with the focus on the sectors that use uh, the most resources and where the potential for circularity is high. 
this is very relevant to fulfilling our international commitments and also to follow the global agenda for sustainable development, which has been adopted by the United Nations member states in 2015 and which includes many related ambitions. And also we all need to ensure the fulfillment of EU Georgia Association Agreement. It uh, were also worth noting that uh, despite the pandemic situation in my country, recently in May 2020, Georgia has adopted several regulations which could enable us to take the steps forward for the development of circular economy. In particular, new legislation on extended producers' responsibility principle has already been introduced in Georgia. We understand that development of production and technology and the growth of population naturally led to an increase in consumption, which triggered the problems that more and more wastes are being generated daily, and consequently the environment is polluted. The extended producer's responsibility addresses these challenges as it obliges the producer to manage the waste generated by them, and thus uh, that can be resulted in less polluted environment, and it also obliges the producer to convert the waste uh, again into useful materials, which decreases the impact on the natural uh, resources, of course. EPR approach uh, addresses specific wastes that include different kind of product packaging materials, batteries, uh, tires, oils, and vehicles. And we believe that uh, this, this tool can uh, successfully be used for better management of waste in terms of waste separation, reuse, and recovery. And this tool can also be used successfully in terms of developing circular economy examples in country, where uh, together with the public and private partnership, we could achieve the goal to reduce the number of waste and to uh, reduce the pollution of uh, environment at the same time. Meanwhile, I mentioned that uh, the development of uh, climate friendly economy is also important. The green economy uh, is also important. And in this context, the Georgia, with the support of the European U Union, is um, uh, elaborating the long-term low emission development strategy and climate action plan, which is currently under development, as well as uh, the integrated climate and energy action plan to ensure that uh, green uh, development of energy, agriculture, transport, construction, and uh, other sectors meets the priorities of the country, meets the international obligations of uh, our country in terms of fulfilling the EU-Georgia Association Agreement, and not only uh, the uh, international uh, obligations to meet uh, and to implement the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, we remember and we know that we had a very positive experience of uh, strengthening the environmental governance system in our countries by cooperating with the UNEC and its member states. And you remember that we were able to develop a very efficient legislative framework and also to create a very concrete tools and ensure that the environmental governance system is strengthened in our countries. And uh, this brought a very important results already in my country, and this supported Georgia to uh, uh, implement its international obligations. And I believe that if we continue the future cooperation with the UNEC to promote the circular economy in our countries and regions, uh, this could be a very good chance for us to set the clear priorities and to collab collaborate in order to achieve the significant results in this direction. I thank you again for inviting me in this session, and I hope that we could be able to continue the successful cooperation in order to uh, implement the circular economy principles in our economic development. Thank you. Many thanks, Your Excellency, for these uh, also very insightful remarks, for sharing your views from the perspective of the Ministry of Environmental Protection and Agriculture. And uh, thank you for putting it all in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and flagging to us the priorities Georgia has set. And also thank you for your kind remarks about the cooperation with UNECE, which I hope we will be able to take forward. 
I believe these opening remarks have set the scene on the importance of promoting circularity in transition economies. And let me now thank you once again, Ms. Algayerova, Excellency Bekteshi, Excellency Tandishvili, for the insightful messages you have uh, conveyed during this uh, opening segment. Before moving on to the next segment of our session, let me remind our audience, and especially those who have just joined us, that English-Russian interpretation is available. The instructions for accessing English-Russian interpretation can be found in the chat box. With this, we conclude the high-level opening. And before turning to the experience sharing session, let us also see what our audience uh, has to say, whether our audience engaged, and what terms our audience associates with circular economy. Here are the results of our Mentimeter engagement. For uh, engaging with Mentimeter, you can simply go to menti.com using your electronic device, insert the code you can see on the screen displayed, and uh, let us know your response. The Mentimeter will remain open throughout the session. If we look at the responses so far, very interesting and maybe not surprising to see that sustainability is at the core of the terms we associate with circular economy. We can also see some of the R's, the recycling, the reuse. We can see, uh, importantly, the word efficiency. So we can see the economic dimension here. We can see terms such as development. And I'm very curious to see whether our Mentimeter evolves as we listen to our speakers from the experience sharing session. So please remain with us and, and let us know your views uh, with the Mentimeter exercise. Now, let us turn to the experience sharing segment and we are honored to have with us again, first grade experts, representatives from Kazakhstan and Serbia, as well as representative from the Institute for European Environmental Policy. Let me kickstart this discussion by asking our uh, three speakers a very basic and, and also quite brief question. Tell us who you are and when you first heard about the term circular economy. Please remain brief in these answers. We have a second round of, of questions lined up, but this is our icebreaker. And I will start uh, by giving the floor to Mr. Olshas Tartaya from Kazakhstan. Olshas, you have the floor. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity for, and for the invitation. Uh, by coincidence, uh, I have first heard about the term on one of the UNEC meetings in Geneva a couple of years ago. So from that time on, uh, I joined the, the Bureau of UNEC and uh, happily working with our uh, friends and partners uh, in the working group. Thank you. Thank you, Olja. So that's great to hear you in ECE was actually at the forefront in terms of uh, promoting circularity. And thank you for being uh, with us on the Bureau of Housing, I understand. No? Yeah. Let me now also quickly um, hear from Ms. Alexandra Vucinic from Serbia. When, when did you hear first about circular economy? Uh, excellencies, the distinguished moderator panelists, uh, dear colleagues, on behalf of the Minister of Environmental Protection, our Minister Irena Vujovic and myself, I would like to thank you organizers for inviting me to participate in this event. Uh, well, uh, I heard the term uh, circular economy for the first time uh, uh, at the end of 2016 when the Orga Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe uh, organized the promotional event for circular economy. And in that uh, event, they uh, presented brochure circular economy as a chance for development of Serbia. Since uh, I have been working at the ministry very long time from 2000, 2002, and I dealt with waste management with industrial pollution, this concept was very familiar with me. So I, uh, from 2018, I have uh, appointed and I started working as a head of group for circular and green economy. And after these two years, uh, I learned more, 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 more uh, very much about the circular economy, about all the aspects, aspects of circular economy. So that's it. Thank Four you years. very much. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandra. So uh, for some time already, and again, we see that an international organization was sort of at the forefront of, yes. of communicating. Let me pose the same question to Marianne Petunen from uh, the Institute for European Environmental Policy. Uh, Marianne, when did you first be in touch with Circular Economy? Hi, good morning. Uh, good morning, Elizabeth. Uh, good morning, all the fellow panelists and speakers. It's uh, very delightful to be with you today. Uh, talk about circular economy, particularly in the context of trade and uh, also, of course, the uh, transition economies. Um, for me, circular economy, um, it's like almost like a good friend that came to my life at some point, and I can't really remember quite when it was. Um, um, but obviously, of course, you know, um, I work on EU policy, particularly um, as um, that's my institute's key focus. So it was 2015 that the EU um, adopted its first circular economy action plan. So that obviously is the key date. But of course, you know, before that circular economy had been you know, the talk of the town, um, it kind of morphed from the discussion around um, trend, um, resource efficiency um, into circular economy, expanding the context, and then became a, you know, a key policy area in the EU. So I'd say the benchmark is 2015, simply because I work on circular economy, but uh, otherwise I feel like it's been in my life almost forever now, because you know, it's one of the key areas I work on. Thank you very much. So three different, but not so different answers. Lovely to hear. And uh, we can see that uh, also the circular economy topic may be quite new, particularly when we look at it from a trade and transition economy perspective. The concept has also been around for a while now. With this brief introduction and, and icebreakers, let me now turn to Olshos and Alexandra to ask them more specifically about what pathways their countries, or uh, in, in the case of Kazakhstan, maybe also a particular region or city, what pathways towards a circular economy they have undertaken. Thank you, uh, Olja, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, uh, Excellencies. Um, I'm very glad to participate in this great event. Uh, Elizabeth asked me to be very brief and short, uh, which, which I will do. And uh, I will uh, talk about Kazakhstan and Elmati in particular, and then uh, briefly touch upon uh, the, the, the company which I'm working for at the moment. Um, so if we talk about Kazakhstan, uh, in Kazakhstan, you more frequently hear the term uh, green growth uh, rather than circularity. And the green growth is a term under which uh, Kazakhstan uh, defines and implements uh, sustainable development goals. Um, if, you, if, you, uh, um, if you're curious about the commitment of, of Kazakhstan I mean, uh, on the national level and politically, uh, back in 2013, uh, Kazakhstan adopted a national program, which is called the Concept Strategy on the Transition to a Green Economy. Um, so it's uh, it's in the process of uh, implementation. It's it's been seven years already. Uh, in uh, 2015, uh, at the 17th, seven, I think 70th um, United Nations General Assembly in New York. Kazakhstan announced the uh, creation of a uh, national center for green technologies and um, um, the country implemented it, 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 uh, its, its promise in 2018. Um, also last year, last year uh, Kazakhstan uh, established a separate ministry uh, which is dedicated to environment and ecology, which of course is a, is a very important part uh, uh, for, 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 for secure, uh, circularity. So, um, if you, I mean, these are the, the milestones uh, on the part of Kazakhstan for its commitment to, to circular circular economy. Uh, of course, Kazakhstan is a huge country. It's, um, I mean, given 18 million, 18, 18 million population, it's number nine in, in the world in terms of territory. And uh, of course, each and every city has its own challenges. And um, Almaty, by the way, is the city I live. Is the, is the largest city um, uh, in, in Kazakhstan. And apparently for, 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 for our city, air quality, waste management and water scarcity are most uh, pressing uh, challenges. Um, also Almaty is, um, um, I think one of the first cities in, the, in Central Asia to, to engage in international consultants and um, uh, uh, prepare 
a special report for circular economy opportunities. And um, uh, this was done in 2019. Um, Almaty was analyzed from three different angles, from agriculture, construction, and industry. And of course, I think I believe the report can be considered the first attempt to somehow quantify quantify circularity in, in, in Almaty. Um, um, in each of these three sectors, which I which I mentioned, Almaty of course has certain accomplishments, and for each of the sectors, uh, our city has, um, um, I mean, as I said, accomplishments, achievements, and uh, certain recommendations given given in the report. I mean, uh, if you talk about some of them, some of them. Um, since 2011, uh, the city administration uh, reformed the transportation system, namely it completed and opened uh, the first metro line and replaced numerous taxi vans with a coordinated bus rapid transit system uh, with, with, with buses running on compressed natural gas. Uh, the city administration also introduced the first, uh, the first uh, bike lanes and cleared the way for, for pedestrians. And also, Almaty is uh, um, uh, investing in organic food production. It, it, it already uh, has its, uh, I mean, uh, national and uh, municipal brands for, 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 for organic food. Um, of course, one of the biggest projects which um, Almaty and in our country is undertaking at the moment is modernization of, of our central heat station, Almaty. Um, uh, I mean, modernization from, from coal to, to gas, which will allow the city to reduce the gas emission, I mean, the emissions, I mean, uh, uh, adverse emissions from 17, I mean, I think from, yeah, from 37 tons to, to six tons. And this is going to happen within the next five years. I mean, the, the amount of investment is about $200 million. And, but uh, in principle, it has already been approved by uh, the level of our prime minister. So everybody is, uh, I mean, looking forward to this. If you, um, I mean, look at some principles and um, um, initiatives on the, on the part of our city, I mean, um, we can talk about sustainable dairy value chains, uh, stores with organic food. Uh, uh, we have some projects for things like mushrooms and organic residues, and we have reforestation initiatives. We have, uh, I mean revitalization of apple ore cards, which uh, historically were uh, very important for our city. Uh, we have developments in drones and precision agriculture, and uh, we have, uh, I mean, local companies producing organic wine and even paper from hemp. And these are these are for, for uh, agriculture. In construction also we have a lot of initiatives such as um, uh, the city created a special Almaty development center, which is in very close contact with our citizens on a daily basis. You can use the, all kinds of apps and social networking um, uh, to to raise certain issues which which are uh, important for you. Uh, you can file uh, requests and complaints uh, 24 seven. Um, also, Almaty has developed a master plan together with with uh, a Gail people, a Danish architecture bureau, which are very familiar to, I guess. Uh, we are promoting active citizenship, as I said. Uh, we are preserving architectural heritage, promoting cycling and ecotourism. And uh, together with the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, we develop a technology and a policy roadmap for a low carbon cement sector in, in, in Kazakhstan. These are for construction, for, for industry. For industry, we also have certain um, current initiatives. We are promoting, I mean, we, I mean, established the Green Economy Association. Uh, also, we have companies which are recycling paper. And uh, we are, I mean, uh, focusing on extended producer responsibility, which are, uh, I mean, these principles are embedded in certain documentation at the city and national level. Uh, also, recycling scrap metal, secondary plastic granulates, playgrounds from recycled materials, etc., etc., etc. So we have a lot of initiatives which are going on, and we have uh, certain recommendations which are which were um, given in the report, and uh, these are of course uh, tied together with 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 the national policies. And uh, I believe that together with with the UNEC also we can we can promote these issues together. And uh, I was also asked to mention a bit um, 
about the company which which, which I am heading now. It's it's the Techno Park. Uh, it's the special economic zone for innovative technologies. Um, until 2019, it was um, uh, under the Ministry of, of Investments of Kazakhstan, and since the last couple of years, uh, it was transferred to the authorities of, of, of the city of the city of Almaty. And uh, we are engaged in the development of IT and um, innovative companies. Uh, after this pandemic, we also included uh, uh, medicine and production of pharmaceuticals. So you can also produce uh, these things in, uh, on our territory. Uh, as of today, we have 163 hectares of land, half of which is vacant now for, for potential projects. And um, uh, we have 175 participants, half of which, I mean, more than half of which are IT companies. Um, so uh, indirectly, indirectly, by, by supporting IT and innovative companies, we are, I mean, uh, we are supporting uh, uh, circular economy because circular economy is an efficient economy and an efficient economy cannot operate without, without, I mean, uh, innovative and IT companies. So, um, I mean, Elizabeth, that's, uh, I mean, I, I hope I, uh, I, I mean, delivered my promise and uh, I'm ready for, for questions, if any. Thank you. Many thanks, Mr. Sartayev. Many thanks, Oshas. Like, uh, you, you spanned a lot of different uh, um, areas and you've given us a beautiful chronological rundown of what happened when in, in Kazakhstan and also referred to the creation of the, the Environment Ministry. You've explained us a little bit like the, the key term that is being used in Kazakhstan is green growth, green economy. So we see sort of like how different concepts relate to each other. Um, you've zoomed into what is happening in the city of Almaty and which seems to be really at the forefront by having already undertaken a study what exactly can be done. And you've given us an enormous list of different sectors and economic activities um, that can be linked to the, to the circular economy from agriculture and organic agriculture, construction, um, uh, transport, waste, energy. So all of these are indeed very important sectors. Interesting that this um, extended producer responsibility principle seems to come up in, in many of the speeches. So we see a, a coherence in that. And thank you, last but not least, for uh, also referring to the, the techno park, the importance of special economic zones, and particularly of innovation. And I think here it resonates with uh, the work we are doing here in UNECE, where we also look at innovation, innovation supportive policies as one way to foster the, the circular economy. So thank you for that. Let me now, um, very rich rundown, let me now turn uh, to Alexandra to uh, explain us how Serbia is approaching circularity. Alexandra, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, uh, when we speak about the circular economy in Serbia, I can say that we have a lot of potential for this. With the existing uh, strategic and legislative framework, uh, there is a perspective for a partial transition from a linear to circular economy, but uh, in order to uh, fully implement the principles of cir circular economy, it is necessary to include circular economy concept in many public policies, strategic documents, programs and action plans, because circular economy is multi-sector topic. And what were our first steps towards circular economy transition? Well, Ministry of Environmental Protection is a focal point for the implementation of circular economy. Uh, concept and uh, first the th first thing that we have done is uh, that we made the gap analysis at the end of 2018 and we recognized the challenges. Uh, we uh, our first uh, task was to um, to establish a special working group for circular economy with the members from 18 different ministries and organizations uh, and. Uh, in order to prepare strategic framework for circular economy in Serbia in accordance with the law and planning system, which is uh, uh, from 2018 uh, uh, exists in Serbia, uh, we prepared the ex ante analysis for circular economy. Uh, that is a, a pre-document for the document of public policy, which will be the program for circular economy with action plan for three years, and that is planned to be done in 2021. This strategic document uh, uh, also 
uh, preparation of this strategic document uh, also is included as a measure in the economic reform program, which is the most important strategic document in the economic dialogue between Serbia and European Commission. Uh, so that is one part of our activities to make this uh, strategic framework, to make this program. Uh, uh, also, one of the main activities uh, is was uh, in the previous period that with the support of UNDP project, Circular Economy Platform for, Su for Sustainable Development in Serbia, uh, Ministry of Environmental Protection prepared the roadmap for circular economy in Serbia. The goal of this roadmap is to encourage manufacturing with the use of circular business models to motivate the industry to create new jobs and, of course, to improve doing business by funding innovative and sustainable solutions for the market. So the roadmap includes recommendations on how to overcome the burdens that private companies in Serbia perceive on their journey towards circular economy. Uh, European uh, six chapters in this roadmap provides an overview of global challenges, European regulation in the field of circular economy, the current situation in Serbia, examples of good practices because we have it in Serbia, and also uh, recommendations for further development of the circular economy in Serbia. Uh, we prepared this document in May this year and translated to English into English in September and posted on the website the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. And uh, anybody who wants can download this document. And I can say that we are the first country in the region that prepared this kind of document. Also, uh, what I want to underline in this strategic framework uh, from March 2020, we have two very important strategies for the circular economy. First is strategy for industrial politics from 2021 to 2030, which uh, recognized the concept of circular economy and one chapter is fully dedicated to circular economy. And second one is also very important smart specialization strategy from 2020 to 2027. And both strategies uh, include concept of circular economy. Uh, also from last year, uh, we have program for development of public procurement, which promotes green, green public procurement. And in the action plan, of this program, uh, it is stipulated that the, in 2020, one green public procurement should be done. Uh, also, uh, the national strategy for waste management is uh, uh, under the preparation, it is in draft, uh, climate action strategy and program for cleaner production are also in the draft phase. And I believe that when they will be adopted, they will also uh, will be the great support to circular economy implementation. Uh, the main problem that uh, we are facing with is that regulation doesn't follow the, these strategic documents. So we need more laws and bylaws in national field fields uh, to be fully in compliance with EU key. So we have or we will adopt in 2021 many strategies, but it should be supported by laws and by law and by laws in order to this concept can be easily implemented. Uh, as a candidate country, of course, Serbia have to follow all documents that EU recently has prepared, such as Green Deal, Green Agenda for West Western Balkans, New Action Plan for Circular Economy, Industrial strategy, economic and investment plan for Western Balkans and others. In the process of creating great sustainability, uh, we also recognize that Serbia needs to increase the volume of investments, knowledge, skills, technologies and special partnerships created for the development of generically sustainable carbon neutral circular agriculture sustainable material industry, technological processes, products, services, including, including financial, 
especially incentives for entrepreneurship and the multiplication of micro, small and medium enterprises in, this, in the leading sectors in the future. In parallel with this, we recognize that, that public awareness must be developed among all structures of society, children, youth, adults, about the importance of environmental protection and human health. So circular economy should become the goal of our society. And to conclude, uh, I would like to underline that circular economy has a great potential for making our lives sustainable. Therefore, Serbia remains strongly committed to making the shift from linear to circular economy, and not only to achieve the obligation under the EU regulation, but for the sake of future generation that deserves better environment. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Alexandra, also for this very comprehensive uh, presentation and showing us how Serbia is moving from a linear to a more circular economy, definitely seems to be one of the front runners in the region. It's interesting for me that we have both speakers coming from the more economic and from the environmental side, and we can see the interaction between those two dimensions. Now, Alexandra, I found it also very interesting that you looked a little bit more at the institutional and, and process part. You uh, talked about the gap analysis, the development of a strategy, uh, the importance of not only having strategies, but also implementing them through laws and, and regulations and, and the work you are doing here. And um, it's uh, also very interesting to hear now also the, the engagement with the EU on this. And I think our next speaker will, will be able to shed some light on that. And uh, last but not least, uh, Alexander, you mentioned many of the terms that relate to our work here in, in UNECE. Uh, innovation, for example, uh, similar to our speaker from Bihor, entrepreneurship and SMEs, MSMEs, all these are actors that uh, we will try to take on board in our joint journey towards a, a more circular economy. So thank you for that. Let me now to, uh, turn to Marianne Keitunen uh, to uh, give us her um, perspective, experience, and her insight from uh, Brussels. Marianne, you are joining us from Brussels, I understand. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, in spirit from Brussels, as myself and my institute, we work on European policy, but actually physically uh, from Southwest UK. But that's the global world for you. But for the purposes you know, of this conversation, you know, uh, Brussels is really the um, perspective I'm taking here, um, most first and foremost. But um, so thank you. Uh, thank you again, Elizabeth, for this interesting event. And thank you, fellow panelists, for these interesting insights uh, from your countries, which are all quite new to me. So what I will be talking about is um, what role trade particularly can play in supporting circular economy, including those initiatives that we've heard from different countries from uh, transition economies. So I'll start by setting the wider context, uh, looking at what is happening at the moment in the EU, but also in the world more, more broadly. And building on that, um, I'll think of a few suggestions or tips that I can possibly think of uh, for the transition economies and next steps um, when moving forwards. Um, and then I'd love to hear from you, you know, whether those resonate um, and uh, whether you think they might be useful as well. But what is happening in the EU and the world at the moment to give that broader picture perhaps? So as I mentioned, the EU has had a circular economy action plan since 2015. But interestingly, and most importantly, um, the second version of the circular economy action plan was adopted earlier this year as key part of the EU Green Deal. Um, and uh, this circular economy action plan 2.0, as we call it, um, it's even further comprehensive plan on how EU will switch to circular economy. In, in comparison to the previous circular economy plan, it now includes um, more sectors going beyond waste, going beyond plastic. Um, and I'm going to talk about those next. And also it puts the EU's and transition in a better global context than before, which is really interesting and important as well. Um, so it basically is a range of specific regulations, incentives, uh, development of technical solutions and policy dialogues, all to enable the shift from the EU side to circular economy in the global context. 
Um, let me give you a few key elements of the circular economy action plan. So to make it more concrete. So it provides a policy framework for sustainable products. So we talk about circular economy products and production standards, um, looking at the whole life cycle of products uh, for the EU. So we look at product durability, reusability, repairability, and also the presence of hazardous chemicals um, in products um, in the EU and uh, produced in the EU. And also we're looking at providing requirements for secondary raw material content in the products that are put in the EU market. So those types of different aspects of the product policy we are looking at in the future in the EU. In addition to product policy, the Circular Economy Action Plan also looks at how resource use can be less waste and more circularity. So um, looking at having more circularity within the EU, so ramping up EU's waste recycling capacity as one of the elements, but also creating EU markets for secondary raw materials. Um, so incentivizing, for example, uh, product procurement for circularity in the EU. And key part here, as before, is the extended use of responsibility, as been already mentioned, I think, in the Georgian and Kazakhstanian context. So EU has been looking into and will continue looking into um, that particular instrument uh, as well. So as I mentioned, there will be key sectors as part of the EU circular economy action plan now, and those include electronics and the uh, ICT, batteries and vehicles, packaging and plastics, textiles, constructions and buildings, and food, waste, water and nutrients. So as I said, it now broadens this circular shift beyond plastics and waste into other sectors, including, for example, textiles uh, and constructions being important as well. So that's the EU Circular Economy Action Plan. And now, of course, the question is, what does it mean for trade? And what does it mean for EU trade and cooperation partners like the transition economies? So in a nutshell, I think it provides a number of different kinds of opportunities um, to cooperate around trade. Um, there will be more markets, hopefully, for exporting secondary raw materials or circular products into the EU. Uh, new business opportunities on circular products and services uh, between the EU through these different trade agreements. Um, but obviously, these opportunities require looking at one thing, and that is matching the production standards with the EU's future standards that EU is now ramping up for circularity. So opportunities, but we need to cooperate and look at, you know, how we can have the standards and harmonise and working together so these opportunities can be taken up by partner countries. Uh, and there really is an explicit recognition of the role of trade to support these types of developments uh, with trade partner countries in the EU Circular Economy Action Plan. It says that EU trade agreements should reflect these EU's enhanced objectives to circularity um, and provide cooperation. Um, there can be also challenges uh, because obviously more circularity within the EU might mean and will mean less need for imports for certain types of um, certain type of products, for example, um, primary raw materials. And that obviously can be a challenge to those EU trade partner countries that have heavily so far relied on exports to EU on primary raw materials. And this needs to be recognized both by the EU and, and the trade partner countries and dialogues to be had, what can be done around this, what can be the new opportunities to compensate for the lost opportunities when this happens. So that's the EU um, and similar, Developments are also happening globally. Um, there's a growing interest in WTO, in the context of WTO, to look at circular economy. Circular economy is seen as one of the key mechanisms for sustainable trade cooperation to support free green recovery. That's very evident from the WTO dialogues at the moment around trade environment. There are key indicators for this. So, for example, circular economy was one of the key themes um, at the WTO Trade Environment Week which has happened a couple of weeks ago, um, for example, featured also in the high level session. Um, circular economy is one of the key thematic focuses of WTO Aid for Trade Work program um, for 2020-2022. Um, and there is a new initiative now started um, under WTO 
a structured discussion on trade environment sustainability, supported by 49 WTO members, um, including EU, and I think also North Macedonia around the table. And circular economy is one of the key focal areas uh, mentioned in this new initiative. So basically bringing WTO members around the same table to talk about trade sustainability. So that is a quick snapshot of what is happening in the world, EU and globally. So now, as promised, moving on to some suggestions or perhaps tips for the transition economies to consider uh, when moving forward, looking at the global developments. So I've um, picked up three areas for suggestions uh, for this. And my first um, suggestion is indeed start with waste recycling, as I think heard a number of people mentioning, uh, but go further. Uh, and also use these broader sustainability initiatives that I've heard both of the speakers to mention and link those to circular economy as well. So as a reminder, a starting point, circular economy is not only about closing the loop, it's also about making the loop slower to make products last longer. It's about making the loop stream more narrow, so being more resource efficient and also critically considering the size of the loops of different sectors. Loops can be local, they can be national, they can be regional, they can be local. So having an analysis uh, for your countries um, um, or your regions or your cities as to what size of the loop might be more sustainable will be important. Um, I do believe that there's a great opportunity for the transition economies to do a leapfrogging, as they call it, to kind of short circuit the development of circular economy visions and strategies, learning from some of the forerunners, including <laughs> learning from the mistakes by the forerunners, like, for example, learning from EU's mistake in terms of waste recycling and what kind of um, regulatory framework needs to be put in place so that waste recycling is sustainable. Um, so that, you know, it doesn't lead to exporting waste globally uh, unsustainably to third countries, um, which is obviously, you know, what EU did not um, consider as well as should have in the previous, in the first circular economy action plan. So that's something, you know, that can be perhaps, you know, uh, taken up already and just really leapfrogged into the version 2.0 without, you know, the first version um, for the uh, economies transition economies. Um, and obviously, one thing that I'd like to remind here as well is really remembering that the goods and services go hand in hand when it comes to circular economy. So really important to work on facilitating um, innovation, but also trade in both simultaneously, not only just looking at the goods side, but also really the services that complement that as well. So uh, different kinds of repair, repairing services and recycling services and so forth. Um, then uh, my Second tip would be looking at how can we use trade relationships with the EU to support the transition economies to take up these opportunities. Um, the trade relationships that the transition economies have with the EU vary across the countries, um, but I think it's fair to say that these relationships are quite important for both parties uh, across the board. And all the countries around this virtual table uh, today have some type of preferential trade agreements with the EU. So building on this framework, um, what I would suggest is to bring the discussions on circular economy related opportunities to the table and start discussing how these preferential trade agreements could be linked to supporting circular economy in the future explicitly. Um, and in, a, in a dialogue focused specifically perhaps on keeping an open dialogue on the product developments and standards and making sure that um, disharmonization of standards will not prevent future, future trade cooperation uh, around circular economy. So really looking at uh, harmonization of standards um, together. Um, and in, a, in that context, EU has mechanisms in place to support transition economies through different kinds of dialogues and also economic cooperation programs. So these types of dialogues and cooperation programs, which are not specifically on trade, but can support trade, for example, aid for trade programs, um, can be used to help support national capacity to match the trade opportunities that are perhaps available. So really to develop um, the circular economy at the national scale that can then provide a framework to take up trade opportunities, including with the EU. So that was my second tip. And the third one, as promised, is also is more about what can be done regionally. So I would also encourage um, transition economies um, to look at, uh, in the future circular world, what 
loops could perhaps be closed on a regional level um, between certain trade partner countries within region or sub-region um, and you know, critically assess that and see uh, what makes sense. Um, perhaps commission a regional or sub-regional scoping study to look at that, look at different sectors and different trade flows um, in that context. Um, I'm not a regional expert uh, on transition economies, but I have picked up that there is a special program for the economies of Central Asia, SPECA, I believe, including Kazakhstan. And in this context, there have been principles for sustainable trade adopted in 2019. Um, and by the quick look at those principles, it seems to me that they provide a really good starting point to also consider circular economy in the context of trade as a one example. Um, it particularly highlights as one of the key principles developing national sustainability standards to trade um, and uh, connecting those standards with trade partner countries. So it seems to me very suited for circular economy cooperation. Those are my three tips for the transition economies, but as a fourth additional tip or encouragement, I suppose, will be coming to UNEC um, that works a lot on traceability and transparency of value chains. That's a really good work. Keep up with that work because the transparency and traceability of value chains will be key for transitioning to circular economy in the future. So um, that type of work um, that you're doing is crucial and important here. So those were my thoughts, uh, rushly walked through in a very narrow time, but hopefully you got some of that. And I'd love to hear your reflections as to how they sound, sound to people actually working in the region. Thank you. Many thanks, Marianne, for this like uh, also very comprehensive rundown and for um, including a, a tip and an action point also for UNECE. Indeed, uh, we, we are very proud of our work on transparency and traceability on, on supply chains. And we are currently looking at that uh, in the area of textiles and uh, garments and footwear. But I hope that we will be able to broaden that and sort of like look at, at more sectors. Here, we really have a clear link between circularity, sustainability and, and trade. Now, Marianne, you gave us a wonderful rundown looking at the, the EU dimension. And here, I think one of the key messages was the move from the first to the second generation of circular economy action plan. And that second generation is really to go beyond waste and maybe address many of these sectors that we heard earlier on already from, from some of our other speakers. Um, I really appreciated, Marianne, that you linked it to trade. Yeah, And on the one hand, to the discussions that are happening in, in the WTO, you've mentioned the uh, trade in the environment week. Uh, you've mentioned also the, the structured discussion and you've also mentioned some of the uh, trade policy and, and uh, supportive tools such as aid for trade and that might be indeed an, an area to explore. You've also highlighted both the potential as well as the challenges arising from trade. So circular economy might actually make some of the trade opportunities being reduced uh, while others are being expanded. So we have to be honest and, and uh, in that. Now, uh, I understood like there were three tips. First, going beyond waste. Secondly, uh, you use the relationship with the EU and the, the, the tools that are there. And third, uh, look at it from a regional perspective. And I think there we've already heard what is happening in, in the Western Balkans. And very interesting that you picked up on, on the SPECA principles, uh, which indeed are uh, an, a very promising tool happening in, in Central Asia. So thank you for these rich remarks. Before I turn uh, the floor back to our two country speakers uh, to, to see whether they would like to share their reflections on, on what they've heard from, from other colleagues, shall we have a quick look at the, the Mentimeter and if Michael is available to pull up and see what our audience has to say, uh, whether the terms that are being associated with circular economy are still the same or whether this is being this is changing whether our discussion had an impact in terms of what uh, is is being associated with circular economy let's see the screen is changing yeah so it has moved a little bit sustainability is still at the core i would say zero waste is, is coming out much more prominently so on the one hand we've heard uh, the importance of going beyond waste, uh, but uh, zero waste uh, still uh, sort of like is maybe one of the, the key entry points. And uh, third, uh, large word I can see here is resources. So it's really about preserving resources, reducing resource use and thinking about reusing resources. So interesting to see uh, some of these shifts and uh, some of the terms will be looking at that in more detail as we close the, the webinar in, in a bit. Before closing, let me use that opportunity to uh, 
play the floor back to our speakers from Kazakhstan and, and from Serbia, Mr. Sartayev uh, and, uh, and Oljas, Alexandra, is there something you would like to reflect on after these additional comments you heard? The floor is yours, Oljas. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I just noticed there is a question addressed to me regarding electric transportation. Um, yes, I just wanted to say that yes, uh, Kazakhstan is um, uh, moving in this direction. Some of the uh, public transport, I mean, meaning buses, uh, are already electric in Almaty and, and uh, the, the capital city of Nur Sultan. So we're gradually not very quickly, but slowly, but steadily moving in this direction. And also, I mean, a very brief comment that um, I've heard um, about uh, this term, traceability and transparency of value chains. I mean, uh, Ms. Salgayerva mentioned this and uh, Marianne also mentioned this. This um, sounds interesting. And um, of course, uh, thanks for the information. Uh, I'll do my research on these areas and uh, certainly uh, we will use in our analysis and uh, implementation policies here in Almaty and Kazakhstan. Thank you. And also, it was very interesting to hear about, about Serbia. I mean, uh, I've, I have um, several colleagues from, from Serbia. I visited the country once and it was very nice to meet uh, Alexander. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks so much. Thank you for, for this follow up comment. And uh, for also addressing already the questions from the chat, that, that's wonderful. Thank you for that. Now, and we will be uh, very happy to share more information about the, our work on transparency, traceability of, of value chains. I'm also glad to hear that this experience sharing or peer-to-peer -peer learning that we are trying to make happen here uh, is, is considered uh, fruitful. So let me with this uh, turn back to, to Alexandra, whether there is something she would like to share. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, I would like to share uh, my, uh, I was, uh, my, my, how to say, uh, I was very amazed how much uh, in uh, Kazakhstan, Almaty, what they did so far and what they are plans. And I hope that uh, I will have opportunity to come one more and, uh, and to, to visit Almaty and to share experience uh, and maybe to make some connection between Belgrade and Almaty in this sharing experience in this uh, experience sharing and also I want to say that these three suggestions that we got from Marian are very 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 good and I already have some ideas how to implement and how to 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 make this uh, happens in Serbia so uh, Thank you very much for everything. It was very useful for me, this uh, uh, knowledge sharing. And I hope that UNEC will uh, have some project in Serbia, regionally maybe, because I think that uh, it, will, it will be very good for Serbia. And also we have some projects, but still everything is in the, how to say, beginning phase. So we need more project and uh, more uh, help from international organizations so please <laughs> count on us if you if you want to make some project regarding circular economy in Serbia. Many thanks Alexandra Thank for this and uh, indeed we, we stand ready to to work with you in in that joint endeavor now um, very briefly before we close I see two more questions in in the chat and um, I don't know to whom exactly to address them, may, maybe Marianne at, at some point. And uh, one of them is, um, how can a government identify competitive areas for promoting circular economy? Now, we've heard a little bit the gap assessment that was being done in Serbia. Yeah, Are there any ready-made available tools uh, that, that can be used or do these tools still need to be created? And a, a second question we have here, um, Namely, what are ways to stimulate circular mechanisms in the sphere of SMEs? So we heard uh, from, from our speaker from Kazakhstan also the importance of roping in SMEs and that's indeed uh, uh, an important policy area. So is there something already, are there toolkits out there um, for roping in SMEs into the circular economy transition? Sorry, Elizabeth, were you um, hoping that I would be able to, uh, to say something to these two questions? 
<laughs> that would be wonderful. And if the answer is that there are no such tools, that's also a very interesting answer. I, and, uh, I think um, I must say that my answer is somewhere in between. I, after a quick, very quick think, there are no tools that I can think of. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not available. That simply means that because I look at circular economy, particularly from the trade perspective and trade angle, um, those tools that would be looking at the national level transition and perhaps you know, roping in the SMEs um, just are not on my radar. Um, I'd be somewhat surprised if something isn't available, if not tools, but you know, certainly examples as you know what has been done, uh, particularly perhaps from, you know, from the EU or some of the EU countries where, you know, for example, SMEs have been a key focus and continue to be a key focus here. So I'd say, you know, um, quick look through uh, of the EU instruments and uh, case studies um, could be could be could be used here um, to, uh, to look at that. But in general, I do agree that um, you know, uh, at the national level, really governments looking at what would be those key areas in transition economies or key sectors in transition economies that um, could be turned to more circular um, would be a good analysis to be taken. Um, and from the trade side, obviously looking at the trade flows, um, trade opportunities, uh, you know, trade partner countries, existing trade frameworks with those countries and interest. Um, is and should be part of that analysis. And again, you know, from the EU's perspective, thinking that that you know there are sectors that a transition economy is trading within EU um, in the context of the existing agreements, um, starting that as taking that as a base of a dialogue and seeing you know where that where that can lead would be interesting. Thank you very much for that. And it's definitely also for us to take up that role in terms of making existing tools available and developing new ones if, if there is need for. Now, as we are coming to the close of the webinar, there is a, a range of questions coming in. And we have questions on the one hand about the specific challenges uh, arising from waste recycling. Um, we have questions about how to reconcile uh, international trade rules, WTO, FTA, RTAs and BITs and the circular economy uh, policies. We have questions specifically targeted to, to some of our speakers um, uh, and how to bridge that gap and how to address the need for specific laws and bylaws. So what I would suggest to do is that we will pick up that, those questions and, and share with our speakers also in writing. And I would here now, three minutes before our closing time, conclude and take this as an opportunity to conclude um, in terms of saying that this definitely was, was a very, very rich session. And I'm, I'm happy that we could do this first of a kind. And judging from uh, this amount of questions that are trickling in now, uh, definitely there is need for more. There is need for more of this type of engagement on, on circular economy in the trade and economic cooperation context and in the specific context of circular economy in transition economies. Now, if I'm uh, trying to uh, see like some of the, the key topics um, that were raised. So on the one hand, uh, it's clear that at the moment, reducing, reusing and, and managing waste is at the heart of circularity. It's the most obvious entry point to, to start with waste, but there is more to waste. And uh, importantly, there are issues related to climate change, the Paris commitments, but also these many other sectors that we heard about. So I think a whole uh, range of discussions and, and work streams can come up here. Secondly, uh, if we look at circular economy, there is this interaction between environment and economy and economic aspects uh, matter a lot. And um, uh, we heard about industrial policies, the policies of free zones. We heard about economic policies such as procurement. We heard about the importance of addressing both trading goods and trading services. We heard about the important role of innovation in all of this. And I'm uh, proud to say that some of the topics in UNECE we are working on, and we will definitely take that as an inspiration to, to sharpen our analysis and sharpen our policy tools on, on these important areas. And related to that, I'm, I'm happy that we could touch upon the, the trade dimension of circular economy, while this is a topic that is gaining increasingly prominence here in Geneva, in the WTO, and also in the discussions uh, at, uh, we had with colleagues from the Geneva Trade Platform. Um, I see that this is still maybe the, the most recent area of, of engagement, and it will definitely be interesting for us to look more into that with our work on sustainability, traceability, and transparency of supply chains being one entry point. 
Now, last but not least, also very interesting to look at circular economy, both from a, a national perspective, an international perspective, but also from the perspective of a city and from a regional perspective. So again, here are many different ways how we can uh, uh, shape this discussion and, and slice the cake in terms of approaching this. So definitely there is scope for more work. I'm very happy that uh, in UNECE, our member states have identified circular economy as the priority topic for our commission session happening in April next year. And I look forward to working with all of you in the preparation of this commission session. I guess for now uh, at uh, 1.30 sharp, it's time for me to thank all the speakers for their engagement, for their engagement in the session, but also already before in our different preparatory uh, discussions we had. I'd like to thank our colleagues from the Geneva Trade Platform who have been wonderful in making this happen at a very short notice. And I'd like to thank the Citra Fund for uh, contributing uh, to the success of this event, also by having this uh, whole engagement about the World Circular Economy Forum that is happening throughout several months and I'm very glad that we could contribute to this. So with this, let me close here. Let me thank you all, wish you a nice day and most importantly right now, stay safe and healthy. <laughs>